problem almost everyone runs into is this situation right here. I need my NPC to react to the player immediately, but it's in the middle of a longer task that needs to finish before it can transition into a chase sequence. Whenever we're creating behavior models for our NPCs, they're always going to need the ability to change their minds regardless of what we're using. So far, I found three ways to do this in state trees. One of them might be a little hacky, but let's get into it. Hello again, Shinobi here. And the purpose of this channel is to discuss what I'm learning in Unreal Engine 5 to both help others and to get feedback on my project. Now, if you've been trying to figure out how to interrupt state tree tasks, you might have come across these three nodes right here. Um, you can get to them by dragging off of your state tree component. Uh, you can see there's a restart logic, a start logic, and a stop logic. And if you've come across these three nodes, you've probably found that they don't work. The reason why they don't work is because if we pull up the source code, these three functions are still empty. And unless something has changed in C++ in the decades since I've used it, empty functions just don't do anything. So as of Unreal Engine 5.4.4, we still have to find a way around this. Uh, the first way to do this that I want to discuss is just going to be state tree events. So an interrupt is going to be triggered by some sort of event happening outside of the state tree. In my example here, I'm going to be using the AI perception component. And basically when the NPC perceives the player, we are going to do some stuff, right? And so in order for a state tree event to work, go ahead and delete these. Uh, in order for a state tree event to work, the first thing we need to do is create a state tree event in our variables window. So we're gonna hit the plus button. I'm just gonna call this test event and click Boolean and search for um, state tree event. And when we look at this variable in the detail, well, first we're gonna compile and we look at this variable in the details panel. Uh, we see that we need to assign a tag. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new tag. I'm gonna hit the plus button. I'm just gonna call it player scene. And we're gonna put it in the default gameplay tags. And add that new tag and I'm gonna select player scene. If you wanna know more about gameplay tags, I'm just gonna recommend that you view uh, this video up here in the corner by the caveman game dev he's done a lot of great content on gameplay tag but anyways the next thing we need to do is actually send this event to the state tree so i'm gonna drag off of our state tree component in our components panel i'm gonna search for send state tree event and as you can see it asks for an event so i'm gonna grab our test event plug that in there and so this is gonna send the event to the state tree. But now we need the state tree to actually be able to handle the event when we, when we send it. So I'm gonna hit compile and then I'm gonna open my state tree. And under my move to task, it's called go to flesh location in this project. Under transitions, I'm gonna hit this plus button. If we open that up, uh, under our triggers drop box, there's an on event and we can select the event tag that we're gonna be sending, which is player scene, and we can tell it where to transition to. That's one way to do it, pretty simple and straightforward, but it does require you going through every uh, state that might need to be interrupted and adding this. There's another way you can do it that's a lot more, I don't know. If this is a surgical approach, we can just hit it with a hammer, and that's to reset the state tree. So if we come back into our NPCs blueprint, Instead of sending the state tree event, the other thing we can do is we can hit, um, we can search for add state tree component. And then we can alt, we can hold the alt key and drag off of our state tree component as to set the state tree. Now, if you highlight the add state tree component and look at the details panel, it's going to accept the state tree that you want to add we can set that to the state tree that's already being run or we can set that to a different state tree if you're doing something like separating out the logic of um, normal patrolling functionality and you want a separate state tree for uh, chasing functionality you can switch to like a, a different state tree using this method too and if we connect the two that's also all that we'd have to do 
Uh, so what what this is gonna do is this is just going to reset the state tree and essentially restart the logic. Now I don't actually know what all the consequences of doing this may be. So this is something that I do. I haven't had any issues with it yet, but your mileage may vary. Um, so. I don't know, make the decision that's best for you, but there's still actually one more thing that we can do. We could take advantage of the fact that state trees can run multiple tasks and they will run multiple tasks in parallel. So another workaround is to create a task uh, that contains anything that could trigger an interrupt, right? So for me, I created a state tree task. I just called it interrupt and on tick. Um, I just check and see if the NPC has line of sight to the player and if it does we just finish the task and that'll trigger a transition. So if you come into your state tree and under the task section if you hit the plus icon you'll see that you can add another task and I would just set it to my interrupt task and that way both tasks like i said both tasks are going to run in parallel and whichever one finishes first is the one that triggers a transition so yeah that's another way to do it i don't know if there's necessarily like a super right way to do it probably the most proper way is to use the state tree events but whatever works works right that's it for this one peace